Okay, everybody, this is our video for week three, just to give you an idea about what's on, on what is in store for week three, what's on board, whatever. Anyway, um, so it's a little bit in advance, but I gotta, I gotta do things a little early because otherwise I will be crushed by the weight of all the responsibilities I have. Maybe you're familiar with that feeling. So for week three, we talk a little bit about plant breeding because it's relevant to all these nursery plants. They were almost all of them were bred. They're cultivars. They're not wildly occurring plants, um, either the old fashioned way with sperm and egg or, um, you know, with lab techniques and uh, some of the content will go over that also. Then a specialized structure. So we understand a little bit more about how leaves and stems and, um, and flower parts and fruits can be modified to still have all the functional parts but sometimes really um, wild and elaborate forms um, so that when you see some, uh, I don't know, some confusing perhaps descriptions about how to identify certain plants that you have a little better understanding of where that stuff all comes from. And then finally for the plant family tree, um, is it gonna work? It works, hooray. For the plant family tree, um, we, we enter, I think I used the brave new world. It's kind of a cliche, but anyway, the brave new world of the gymnosperms um, so what's cool about them I mean, cool, you're like, yeah, it's really cool about the gymnosperms is that they, um, you know, so they had vascular tissue, right? The ferns figured that out, but the ferns still needed to have, um, water for sperm and egg to get together. But the gymnosperms solved that problem because not only did they have wood, which actually uh, happened evolutionarily before seeds. Um, so the lignophytes, which is something I just learned, it's kind of cool. Um, they were able to have that tissue that could make them grow really tall. But then they also had a seed. The development of the seed was huge evolutionary innovation because it ended up, I mean, this is going to sound a little weird. It's kind of a metaphorical, really, but that they, the, the, um, the sperm and the egg carried what they needed for the sperm to get to the egg. Um, so there's all kinds of vocabulary. The micropile and the pollen droplet and blah, blah, blah. Um, that you can get into when you take a plant, I don't know, plant systematics course somewhere in your career, uh, academic career later, when you're going to be a PhD botanist, right? You don't have to know it, but it's kind of cool. Um, also that, uh, yeah, so the first, the early um, groups of gymnosperms, which was the um, amazing and beautiful, I have one in the back, ginkgos, ginkgos, yes, indeed, with those beautiful fan-shaped leaves. Um, they get to be giant tall trees. They're really, really beautiful. Um, the ginkgos and the, what's the other one? Oh, dude. Got the conifers, the ginkgos, and the brain farts. Um, hold on a second, because I am not going to redo this video. The cycads, indeed. The cycads and the ginkgos still have modal sperm. So the sperm still needs to swim its way to the egg. So I'm assuming that there has to be some liquid water around, maybe seasonally that happens, um, or maybe they carry in, the, in their own um, tissues some, some moisture to make that happen, which gets a little funky if you think of the analogies to people. Um, we'll just stop that right there. And then in the gymnosperms, sorry, and then in the conifers, um, they no longer have that. Um, it's kind of cool stuff, so whatever. So we'll talk about that. You'll, you'll actually have some questions to answer about that. And then, we're starting this oh sorry i forgot so something that i meant to mention i have little notes on that um when you submit your plant profiles um, when you add um, the plant profile information the google docs to the list something to know is that there are actually two lists i was a little wary about putting the big fancy list um, on that very first sign up sheet because i didn't want anybody to mess with it so that one is a protected form and all you can do is look at it. But in the plant profile assignment is another link to the list, but this is a list that has its share settings adjusted such that if you check them, anyone on the internet with the link can open this, okay? When you post your Google Docs to this document, make sure that your Google Doc also is set such that anyone with the link on the internet can open it. Okay, so if you just click on that, it brings up the setting. You can change the setting right here, and then you can copy the link before you um, post it. Okay, so I mentioned that. Check share settings and the two lists. Oh, indeed, also this. 
Um, so I have these other columns, like if it's native or invasive, if your plant happens to be a California native, native where is probably a good question, but we're just going to stick with California natives, then it gets a capital N for native. Um, I know that could be confusing because it could be no, but it's like native or invasive or nothing, right? Um, so N for native, I for invasive, and if it is drought tolerant, there's no definition of that really, it's kind of a little problematic, but you know, whatever. If it says that it's drought tolerant, put a Y in this column. Also, the center of origin for your plants, because that's one of the things that's on the plant profiles, but I forgot to tell you to fill it out, um, and you can't read my mind, which is probably a good thing. Um, so please do enter that information. So we have this document, the one that's editable by all of you, with the plant profiles and this information in it. Okay, mentioned that. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, another note on there that are not in good order is if you don't already have a profile picture for uh, for Canvas, please upload one. Um, if you're not sure how to do it, Canvas help is pretty useful. If you just like click down here on the help, the question, and then say, how do I upload a profile picture? Um, you'll have very clear instructions right there. So um, this week we have uh, the getting to know the plants, the plants that we'll be learning and being expected to know, I think. Week five is our first quiz. I'm going to have to write that quiz like, ah. Anyway, um, these are the plants. We got spruce. So we have some um, pinuses. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know. I'm kind of junior high in my humor, and that always makes me laugh. So here we go. We have some, um, some of those. Uh, prunus, which is in the rose family, kind of cool. And some oaks, beautiful oaks, and some other interesting um, gymnosperms and angiosperms, which we'll get into later. So these are the plants that we're going to learn this week. And then this plant people profile, and I put in that because I, I really, I want you guys to know how many jobs there are out there for people who are into plants, that it doesn't just have to be a hobby. In fact, there are some really kind of esoteric jobs that I had never even heard of um, that hire people all the time um, working with plants. So this is a, um, a doctor, he's not a professor, sorry, he's a PhD. Um, and he's a plant breeder, and he bred, um, there was a specific varieties of basil. I think it was the basil. Oh, yeah, there was a different one about tomatoes, but that was not one that I chose. Anyway, so understanding a little bit about his work um, breeding plants. And then the same sorts of questions about, like, what do you think the impact of that work is? What are some positive benefits of that work? What are some maybe not so positive benefits of the work? Um, just so we're moving through and also understanding what kind of options there are out there. I think that's all that I meant to say. I believe so. Anyway, um, I'm excited to be on this journey with you. It's a bit overwhelming for me at times, having two classes that I have to create from scratch every week. It makes my head spin and it makes me ignore my poor small children frequently. And I have to figure something out about that because that sucks. Um, but I hope you're learning stuff and I hope that you're interested in what we're covering and I hope that it, that stays the same throughout the course. Take care. And always um, message me on Canvas. Show up to my office hours on Tuesdays, 1.30 to 2.30. The Zoom link is in Canvas.